All right, we're just going to do a, a blank Cloud9 container uh, for this. I'm just going to do a quick to-do list on in Rails. I know a lot of uh, other uh, people like to like to show off a to-do list in other uh, frameworks, like for example in Node.js and in just regular JavaScript. So I'm going to do it in Rails. It'll be real quick. Example in Node.js. So uh, let's get started here real fast. Uh, so uh, like like every project that I start, uh, I name my project after my cats. So I have a cat named Fana. I'm just going to say practice in Ruby on Rails, and we're going to use a blank space. Let's get this up and going right now, real quick, because it takes a while for Rails to load in these containers. But hopefully this won't take very long. Uh, this is only going to use one page, <laughs> one web page. And uh, it's going to, I'm just going to put everything on the on the index page. Once we get in there, there's, no, there's not going to be any headers. There's not going to be any. Uh, uh, it's not going to be a uh, nav bar or anything like that. It's just going to be a straight up to do list. All right, so we're in our container. And we're going to make their Shasta, which is my other cast name. So CD over to Shasta, and in here we're going to put our uh, Rails project. We want to see what version of Ruby is installed in uh, Cloud9, and right now it's 2.4.0, which is good. So in here we're going to say RVM use Ruby 2.4.0 at Shesta, and Ruby create version. I'm sorry, Ruby version create. Wow. Right, that just tells RVM that we want to. We want the gem set in this uh, directory or this folder. All right, so now we can uh, install Rails. Oh, by the way, gem was installed also. <laughs> so yeah, gem is gem and Ruby are normally installed in these blank uh, uh, containers in uh, in Cloud9. I think um, Node is installed too. I've not about to check that. But anyways, maybe not, maybe not, maybe Node is not installed, and it's interesting. We're only going to insta install one gem, and that's going to be the Twitter Bootstrap Rails gem, because I'm just going to install it, and that'll give me access to Bootstrap. In this case, it'll be Bootstrap 3, 3.3.7, I think, is the latest uh, version 3 Bootstrap. Right now, they have officially launched uh, Bootstrap 4, uh, so learning that will be the next task for everyone who's going to do, uh, you know, web design and CSS and all that stuff. Bootstrap 4 is now the uh, latest Bootstrap. Otherwise, if you just remember Bootstrap 3, you can still use Bootstrap 3, no problem. <clears throat> all right, Rails is installed. So we're just gonna we're just gonna open up this folder here and uh, we'll just put the rail, new Rails app inside, just like that. It'll bundle itself again. We'll just wait here patiently as this uh, does its thing. Sometimes it can take a while. Otherwise, uh, everything is going smoothly on this end of things. <laughs> Alright, Rails is now... Uh, Installed. We're only going to uh, install one gem into our gem file, and that's going to be Twitter Bootstrap Rails. Just so I have access to uh, Bootstrap in my uh, project. So we'll bundle that. There we go. And it says here, it gives a, it gives a warning that the Ruby Racer might need to be... Uh, uncommented in our uh, project and I will do that just just to do it you know just to have something to do here um, so we'll bundle that also the Ruby race the Ruby racer is just a Java a JavaScript runtime environment for uh, for rails if you have node installed on in, in the in your directory that you're working in that works the same as uh, the Ruby Racer. It gives you a JavaScript runtime environment in there. Okay, so that's all we need basically in our gem file right now. <clears throat> so in our app, 
actually all we're all we're going to do is just make a just one page. We're going to make a uh, index page. So let's do that. Rails generate controller welcome index. All we're doing is one page. The Ruby Racer is a gem that uh, installs a JavaScript runtime environment in your uh, Rails app. Mr. Styles K46. You can look it up. I'm not going to look it up right now, but you can look up the gem in, um, I believe you can look it up in uh, GitHub and see what, it, what, what, what all it does. Okay, so we have our uh, view here, our welcome view right here. We're going to mess with our layout just a little bit also, but here's our index for our welcome view, and we're going to change this. It's going to say, um, have something to do. Okay, so that's what our page is going to look like, and now we can actually start our server, and it should come up. So we start our server, we can preview this. Ha uh ha. -huh. Oh, oh, right, right, right. In our uh, routes, we need to actually change, actually route to our uh, index page. So let's do that. There we go. Now we should get a home page when we preview. We still don't have a home page. What is going on? Do it again. Ha uh ha. -huh. Well, interesting. We are not getting a home page. Let's stop the server. Start it again. Oh, I see, I see. Look at look at this. I did something wrong here. Let's stop it, stop it. Let's uh, change this to a negative P. That should work. There we go. Okay. Very interesting. <clears throat> There's our home page. Have something to do? Enter, enter an item below. We'll, so we'll change how this looks up here in just a second. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is put a container around our page. <clears throat> and we, we'll have to install Bootstrap to do this to make this uh, look right. Okay, so there's a container around that. I'll just I'll just bring everything toward the center of our page. Then once Bootstrap is installed, we'll do that right now. So let's go um, Rails generate Bootstrap install static. And this is, all this does is is create a, a couple of uh, pages for us in our assets, uh, especially our, specifically our style sheets. We want to see this. In our style sheet, because this is what gives us access to Bootstrap, this file right here. Let's stop our server and restart it again. Whenever you deal with um, different uh, files in Bootstrap and your uh, style sheets and your uh, asset pipeline, it's always good to restart your server just in case something was messed with. You know, you don't want any, um, uh, you know, uh, I can't think of the word, but you don't want anything going on in the background that you. Uh, could cause some errors okay so now that container should work now if we refresh this there we go that brings everything toward the center a little bit better excellent um let's keep going so we, we want to do a to-do list so let's create the model we'll call it to do and we're going to have one thing we're 
we're putting in the in the model one, one column it's going to be an item all right I'm going to migrate that uh, schema so here is the migration if you want to know here's the migration this is the table we're creating and here's the schema now we just have one thing just a, a, a table for to do and one string called an item that's it really simple okay next we created the model so that means in our routes let's just go from the bottom up so our model was down here in the database and our routes uh, we need a, we need our resources for the uh, model. Let's keep moving up here. We already have our model uh, here. Here's our to-do model. We're going to uh, validate the item like that. Keep moving up. We need a controller. So let's, let's generate our controller. All right, that could generate our controller. Rail generate, con you know, uh, controller to-dos. And in here's our to do's controller. And our to do's controller in a uh, to do list is going to be very simple. It's going to be a define create and a define destroy. Probably the simplest thing you can do here in Rails is a to do list because uh, you only need two actions in our in, in the controller. <clears throat> so how do we want this to look on our uh, homepage? Well, uh, that's kind of uh, a, that's, that's a good question. So we want uh, two columns here, basically. On our home page, we want our list to appear over here, and we want our form to appear over here on the right. So that when someone comes to our home page, right here will be the form to say, add, a, add an item to the to-do to list. And over here on the left, we want the, the to-do list to populate, you know, one, one on down to whatever number of items they want. Really simple. So uh, let's just uh, get some breaks in here, move it down the page a little bit. I don't, I'm not a designer, so I'm not going to put any fancy stuff in there. But I do know how to make columns, so let's uh, let's start with a div. Let's uh, class, and it's going to be um, row. Our div is going to be a class row. This first div is going to be class row. Our second div is going to be class column medium six, and this will divide the page right in half. So like I said, the first column on the left is going to be our list, which we're not going to fill in just yet. The second column is going to be where our form is. So let's go ahead and do that. Of course, this is going to have a class column mid six also. Just like that. And this is where our um, form is going to be on the other side of, the, of, of our index page over here. And our form is going to be form width. I like to put model, but we'll, we'll, we'll put scope since that's what it teaches you. Well, let's go scope um, at or to do. I think that's how it goes. And then URL uh, to do to do's path. Um, do F. Like that. And then we're going to have our f.text field. For those of you watching, you know, this video, I'm going to make this into a YouTube video, by the way. So say hello to your future YouTube self. And uh, for those of you watching this, uh, if you already know Rails, this is probably really boring to you. But, you know, <laughs> I like it and it's, uh, it's all good. Uh, this is item. We're going to put a placeholder in here, so let's just put a placeholder, and we're going to say, uh, uh, let's see, uh, input, or type item here, something like that. And then, let's see, we have our submit button, right? F dot submit. I'm going to say uh, enter. This is also going to have a class. We're going to make it a button. A big old primary button.
like that. We have an end statement for our form, like that. We want our button to be below the field, so we're going to put a break over here. Let's see if that works. And there's our field. Whoopie ding, right? So there's our field. Type item here. We can hit enter. Uh, but above this uh, field, we want to have like something like, you know, it's, that says uh, enter item or uh, en enter a to-do item, something like that. So above this, we're going to have like an H3 and say enter enter to-do to -do item here. Right there. That looks pretty good. You notice how close this enter button is to this field? Yeah, we're going to even break it further down. Let's get it away from that field there. There we go. That looks pretty good. Enter to-do item here. Type item here. We don't, we don't even have to have this in here, but it... it oh, actually, you know what? Let's, let's make it even better. Let's, let's do... Um, example... Get gas. Or get milk. Or buy milk. Like that. There we go. So now we now they know that the, they can put something in here to type. Now we, when we hit enter, nothing's going to happen, obviously, because we didn't wire up our uh, controller just yet. But at least we got the form here. Form here, And over here on the left is going to be where our list is going to populate down, down the page, uh, which is going to be up here in our uh, other div. But first, let's uh, see if we can wire up the controller in the create, in the create action here. <clears throat> the create method. So first of all, we want to create a new to-do. So let's just give it a, uh, let's create our object here. So to-do dot new. And guess what? We need to put in our parameters for our, uh, our new object. We'll get to that in just a second. So, okay, so right away, we're just going to have a new to-do. And if it saves, we want to redirect to the index page. So root path. Else. We're always going to go back to the root path. It doesn't matter if it saves or not. We're always going to go back there. But... If it's saved, we're going to have something that something that says, "Hey, it's saved," and if it didn't, we're going to have something that says, "Hey, you know, what's going on here? It, uh, there's something wrong." So before we get to that, uh, we need to make our um, parameters. These are um, oh, what's the term? What's the word called when you when you do this? Uh, the private parameters. Um, uh, I forget the word, but anyways, uh, so let's see, uh, params dot require to do permit item, because only one thing we're entering, and it's the item, so that defines what the parameters are to go up there. This is so you can't mass assign uh, something in here or in your um, uh, URL. Like someone can't put malicious intent, you know, in your uh, things. So, anyways, oh, as you know, as as you can see, I I've tried this before. You can see all the things I uh, put in here. I've actually uh, was uh, fooling with this last night. Anyways, um, all right. So now we have our uh, create uh, method done, and in our index, we need a place to. The, the item that we put in, we need a place to put out, right? So that's going to be in our uh, column over here on the left-hand side, which is in here. So this is just going to be an each method. It's just going to be um, at to dos dot each do to do, <clears throat> and each one of these um, to dos is going to be like an H three. We'll, we'll make it an H three, pretty pretty big. And we'll just print out the to-do dot item. Like that. And then below that, we're going to have a delete button. But we're not going to put that in right now. We'll just uh, save that for right now. So let's see if uh, when we enter something, if it works. Number one. So let's let's do that. By the way, in our model, I don't know if you remember, in my, in my model, I validated this 
that, that we had to have something in the field for it to accept. So uh, if we don't have anything in here, nothing's going to happen. Oh, interesting. Oh, oh, oh. I didn't end my uh, each statement, did I? Where's that at? That's right here. Okay, let's do that again. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So in our um, welcome controller, on our index page, we actually have to define our uh, uh, model or our object. And that's just to do dot all. Mm -hmm. I always do that. Uh, I always put the... Uh, equal sign there and that gives me the empty hash <laughs> on the page <laughs> all right so let's enter something let's say buy milk and there's buy milk it, it appeared over here all right so how can we make this look better we need a uh, a list or you know this is the to-do list right so above here in big old h2 we're going to say this is the your to-do list Let's refresh that, see how that looks. There we go. And you know what? We're just, I'm not a designer. I'm just going to put a horizontal rule right underneath that. Who cares? No one cares. <laughs> there we go. All right. And now we need to number these, right? So that's an ordered list. So let's order this list. So these are list items in here. Oh my gosh, we are not typing well tonight. Okay, let's control, let's uh, make, bring that over. So that should be number one. There we go, one by milk, excellent. So we, we, we got it looking a little better. You know, we just want this to be ordered here so that we know how many uh, things we're doing over here. And uh, so on the left, we have our list. On the right, we have our field. And that's what we want. So let's get some other things here. Get gas. Let's, um, let's get, uh, let's, uh, I don't know, uh, get cash. Because, you know, I'm older. I, I, I remember when you had to go to the uh, ATM all the time to get cash. <clears throat> um, I don't know. Visit brother. Okay, so they're all lining up here, as you can see. Buy a milk, get, get gas, get cash, visit brother. And <clears throat> that's good. Get bread. That's right, buy bread. Buy bread, honey. <laughs> pick, up, pick up sun at school. All right, good. So we have an app. <laughs> right? We're going to get canned food. <clears throat> All right, but as you can see, our list is nicely populated down down the left-hand side of our page in our really easy-to-do, uh, you know, application here. This is like the easiest you can do. Of, this, is like, this is like bringing a bulldozer to a uh, sandbox here for, for Rails. Okay, looking pretty good. Looking pretty good, as you can see. Yes, nice. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right, we're going to make this really stand out in just a second here, but um, I like that we have our field over here and we have our list over here on the left. Real simple, really easy to Easy stuff to do, no problems. I think everyone understands what I'm doing here. Um, no tricks, no, uh, you know, no mystery. Okay. Uh, the issue here now is that once we put a to-do list, a to-do item on our to-do list is once we get it done, we need a way to, to delete it, right? We need a way, we need a, a button here to delete these as we get these done. All right, all right. So that's what we have to set up next. So that comes in our uh, each method also. And it's going to be... Um, in here, in our, our our list. So what we're going to do is make it even easier to read. We're just going to bring this down, bring this over, and below this, we're just going to add our delete button. The way you do that is it's it's going to be a link, so it's going to be a link to delete to do, 
and it's gonna be do you, you wanna make it a button? Let's make it a button. Let's make let's just make it a regular old white button. <laughs> Actually let's let's make it a red button. Actually no, let's just make it a a just a link. Yeah, that, that'll make it that'll make it stand out a little bit because it'll be blue. I think. I think the link's blue, right? Alright, let's do that. So it's just gonna be a a link. And um I think that's Oh, and it's a method delete, right? Because when you delete something off a page, off of a HTML page, you have to tell it where to go, right? Wow. Now, those are pretty big delete buttons. We don't want them that big. We want them smaller. So let's do a small. There we go. That looks a lot better now, doesn't it? Look at that. Look at that. Nice delete buttons. They're blue. So let's make our list items red. Huh? How do we do that? Hmm. How do we do that? I wonder if this will stay blue, even though we make the uh, list item red. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, in our style sheet, let's make a file. Call it custom. I'm using SAS, by the way. I see us as SAS. So uh, what do we call that? We call that our list. Not that kind of list. That list. There we go. Let's color it red and just see what happens. Hey, there we go. Now that really that really pops, doesn't it? Look at that. So we have a red item and a blue delete button. Man, you can't you can't get that wrong. <laughs> if you're clicking delete, if you're clicking buy milk and thinking this is the delete button, you got something wrong with you, man. You need some more glasses. <laughs> you need better glasses. <clears throat> All right, so nice. We got our red list items, and we have our nice d blue delete button here. Excellent. The delete button doesn't work yet, does it? It does not work. So we need to wire that up in the controller also. So let's do that real quick here. So what are we finding here in, in our destroy? We want to find the um, uh, the ID of our uh, dis of our um, item, right? All right, so we need to f oh, 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 oh. I'm doing things backwards here. So we're going to find it's the to do dot find params ID because when we click on this delete link, it's actually going to pass a parameter, you know, through our uh, um, web address back to our controller, and we're going to find that ID. Then at to do dot destroy it. And then once we destroy it, we're going to redirect back, right back to the uh, index page, which is our root path. And that should work. Let's try it out. Let's uh, delete this. Let's delete uh, Visit Brother because we, we don't care about our brother today. And there we go. The Visit Brother is gone. Now, the really good, the really cool thing about this is you can actually let the uh, user know, whoever's doing this, that you deleted something, right? We want we want a uh, flash message to go onto the screen when we when we add something to our list and when we delete something from our list and when we uh, try to enter something without having something in the uh, field, right? So we want three things to happen. We want the first number one thing is when we delete something from our list, we want a flash message to say, "Hey." Uh, you deleted something. Number two, when we enter something, we want a flash message to say, "Hey, you successfully entered something." And number three, when we don't, when we try to hit the enter button without something in the field, we want a message saying, "Hey, this can't be blank." So let's let's go ahead and wire that up. Let's go with our first one, our delete. So, um, by the way, we're going to use the flash for that. And let's let's set up our flash in our index page. Uh, the flash is going to be above our list. It's going to be right above our first item in our list. It's just going to be right here. And it's just going to be um, uh, 
flash dot each do me name message I think it's name message I'm going to have to look this up because I forget exactly uh, how this goes. But anyways, we'll keep going. Um, I, you know what? I, I'm not sure this is this is going to be right. But anyways, let's, let's see name, something like that. Put the end. This might not be right. Let's refresh this. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> so you know hmm. this might be like this right like that let's try that there we go okay all right so this class is the alert and notice so when when we have a flash it's it's putting out two things it's putting out an alert and a notice or other things that you want to put out oh right right okay yeah uh mr uh, styles k40 uh, 46 is saying uh should we have a uh, a notice say hey uh if i click on this delete sh shouldn't there be something that pops up that says hey are you sure you want to delete this yeah we can do that I forget how, <laughs> but we can do that. <laughs> um, I think it's um. Oh man, what is it? Uh, it's the alert, right? It's um. Oh, I'll look, look that up. Let's look. Let's, let's look that up. That is right here. And when you delete something, it's way down here at the bottom. There it is. It's the uh, oh confirm. It's a confirm message. Data confirm. Okay. So let's uh, let's do that. Oh. Oh, that's that's a that's a strange way. Okay. Is it a colon? Yep. All right, let's try that. So we're so we're going to give them the uh, message, the, the confirm to uh, you know when when they hit the click the, the delete button. Let's save that. Let's try that. Let's delete by bread. Oh, it didn't work. Uh-huh. Let's uh, restart the server again. Delete by milk. There we go. There's the uh, alert. There's the, um, I don't know what you call it, the pop-up, you know, saying, are you sure? You click OK. It deletes it. But then I want a uh, a message here saying you deleted the uh, item. So let's do that because so we have our flash now. We have our flash uh, statement here, and that's in our to-do's controller. After we destroy it, we're going to have a flash. This is going to be a notice, and it's going to say. Uh, You deleted the item, so let's uh, refresh. Let's delete, get cash. Uh oh.
Okay, it had to take a second to re refresh. Let's delete, delete the cache, okay. And then... Oh, wow. Ooh. <clears throat> okay, I got you. I found the error. It's right there. Okay. Let's delete this. There we go. Now we have a you deleted the item uh, message uh, above our list. That's, that's what I wanted. So in our uh, custom C, uh, SCSS, so we have an alert. These are all classes, so we can have a dot alert, and our alert is going to be red. And our notice, our dot notice, we're going to make green. Okay, so let's say let let's try to enter something here. Actually, no, we ha we didn't wire that up yet. So we so we have something that's, that says you deleted the item when we hit delete. So let's add some things again. Let's uh, by red. Uh, get cash deposit check. Whatever, whatever the case may be here, and we have something that says, hey, you deleted. Uh, something now it's green when we delete now let's uh, get the uh, alert when we don't enter something in the field let's let's do that real fast in our controller so this is this uh, is when it saves so when the to do saves uh, we wanted to add the item to the list and we wanted to say say hey you added you added an item to the list let's do the flash it's a notice and we want it to say, you added an item. And then if it doesn't save, let's say we try to enter something without anything in the field, then that flash is going to be an alert. And that's going to say, can't be blank. Let's try it. Let's try um, adding an item here. Let's say, uh, I don't know, wash dishes. So it says you, add, you added an item when we added the item. And let's hit the enter button without having anything in the field. And it says can't be blank. Pretty good. And that's your simple to-do list. It's very, very simple. This is just just a one-page application for a t an entering a to-do list, and we can delete. And it says you deleted an item. That's it. It's basically it. We can center this stuff up top also.